Hi, you saw in my previous video about uh, two layer versus four layer, and we had a look at using uh, some H field uh, EMC probes to measure the radiation on uh, PCBs, and they're very handy bits of kit. And the one I've got is the uh, Techbox uh, EMC probe, and they're a very nice little set of uh, three H field or magnetic field probes and one electric field probe, along with a uh, 20 dB wideband amplifier for the thing just to amplify the signal you can connect these directly to a scope without an amplifier but it's like pretty low level stuff so external amplifier is nice and this is a nice bit of kit of course it comes with the full uh performance uh, characteristic curves here's the coupling loss uh measurement and they're just great but uh, the problem is they're like over 300 us dollars on uh, amazon so i thought we'd have a go at making our own h field probe for 10 bucks <laughs> let's go I've got a piece of rigid coax and a uh, little pre-amplifier here. This was basically uh, $10 on eBay delivered. This is uh, rigid coax. It's RG402. You can see it's actually got a full 100% uh, rigid outer shield on it. It's 50 ohm coax already pre-terminated with uh, SMA connectors. And you can buy just the coax on its own, but <laughs> might as well buy them uh, pre-terminated like this. And these are like $5 delivered Oh, no, sorry, $3 delivered on eBay. And you can get these little uh, pre-amplifier boards as well. They come in many uh, companies actually make these and sell these on eBay. But, you know, you can get them for as little as like $6 each and delivered on eBay like you can get ones like in cases and stuff this one's just like you've got to feed in your own external uh, five you know I think it's six to twelve volts this one but uh, yeah this is a 30 dB uh, gain one as opposed to 20 dB gain in the uh, tech box one but we can just uh, knock in a 10 dB attenuator to make them equivalent but 10 bucks can we turn these into our own do-it-yourself h field probe well let's have a go and there's just a closer look at the uh, rigid coax for those who haven't uh, seen it before. And it is uh, quite stiff. It really is very difficult to uh, bend these. But of course you can bend and form them, which is uh, very nice for like um, snaking through a product. And like if you open any like, uh, you know, top end spectrum analyzer or something like that, you'll often find these uh, rigid coaxes going everywhere. They're just... Uh, just fantastic so we'll try this you could you know you could do it with regular coax but this rigid stuff is very nice because it just forms a um a nice rigid <laughs> structure um for the uh probe whereas coax is just gonna like <laughs> flap around in the breeze now of course you can actually make a h field probe just out of a piece of uh, copper wire on the end of a bnc connector but and and it kind of worked you know and it actually does work but i thought we'd uh, splurge the extra uh, three bucks and get this uh, nice rigid coax which uh, gives us the nice uh, shielding so it uh, shields out some of the um, e field as well because we're really after a h field uh, probe here and if we have a look at uh, this h field uh, probe from TechBox, it's all it's going to be. People think that there's many loops of wire in here. That's not so. Uh, what this is is this is just going to be a uh, just a PCB, likely a very nice uh, you know controlled impedance like uh, Rogers uh, dielectric or or something like that. But it's basically got the SMA on the end. There might be uh, some ferrites in here, but I I doubt it. I think it's just the uh, PCB uh, straight through. So anyway. It's just a PCB with a 50 ohm uh, transmission line embedded in there, and then it uh, the, so the ground on either side, and it's going to continue around here like this, probably with uh, via stitching on either side and all the way around, and then they're going to short the other end to the uh, ground over here. So it's actually a shorted uh, loop, and they're going to have a little break in the uh, shield there. And like I said, you can do the same thing with just a BNC. You literally take the output of the BNC, make a loop out of it, some to either a round one or a uh, square one, and then just short it back to ground and that's your EMC probe and they're doing exactly the same thing here and that's what we're going to do with our rigid coax as well. Now some designs actually have the uh, brake over here but then it's a non-symmetrical design so I'm sure this one's actually going to have the brake in the middle. It, it just gives you a uh, symmetrical shielding across the uh, loop like this. Now the difference between a round one and a square one is a bit 
uh, academic, really. But if you wanted to get down to individual uh, traces, then a square one with the end that's flat can often be better because you can actually uh, put it right next to a straight trace like that. And then if you have a square one, it's going to couple better into the probe uh, potentially. But we're just going to duplicate this uh, round one today so that we can sort of maybe get an AB comparison. So we'll just cut our uh, rigid coax in half, which means that we actually get two of these babies. And as you can see, it just looks like uh, any other coax with the uh, dial a solid dielectric in the middle um, with a solid core conductor inside and then the rigid outer 100% uh, uh, shielded outer, uh, well, it's not braid, but it's a, a solid outer core, which makes it stiff and rigid, hence the name. Now, because we're going to form this into a loop and then uh, solder it on uh, or terminate it on uh, one end, and then we need to put the uh, slit in the in the middle of it like this. Um, just before you do that, it's probably best just to practice how to get in there and cut out the shield. We'll just give that a go. Probably best just to get in there a knife, and you're going to have to get in there and somehow, like, uh, just split it along one edge, and then bingo, you should just be able to peel that off. Now as I said a common way to do this is to simply just bend this uh, back on itself like that and just strip a tiny lever like a, just a small amount uh, exposed over to here and literally just solder the um, the center of that back over to the uh, shield over here to form the uh, shorter turn. Um, you can do that but as I said then it's going to be non-symmetrical so what we want to do is actually not have any exposed here we actually just want to cut it then solder the inner conductor on there and also the outer conductor as well and then put our split across there. Now I'm going to actually uh, try and match the diameter here as I said but uh, the diameter actually um, isn't really uh, critical. I just want to be able to do a reasonable AB comparison uh, between these. You can make it as small or as big as you want. The la hence why the uh, set actually comes with these different size um, heads because the larger the loop the greater the uh, sensitivity, the greater the uh, pickup but unfortunately the less resolution you're going to have to be able to spot problems. So generally you'll go over your board with like a larger one first to try and find any potential issues and then you might get a smaller one like this which actually does <laughs> there's probably a tiny little hole in the thing it, it works exactly the same it's just smaller diameter you can go over and then uh, you know get a bit finer resolution to try and pinpoint the exact location of any uh, radiated emissions and as I said what we want to do is short out both the inner conductor and the outer shield to the shield over here so maybe leave a bit out and then bend it over at uh, 90 degrees and then solder the whole lot. And while heating this up, I found that it actually tended to expand outwards. I guess due to, uh, you know, thermal expansion, it just wanted to go back uh, straight. So probably best just to hold uh, the loop together while you do it. So there's our end result there, which kind of sort of matches the uh, diameter of our tech box one. And just for good measure, you might want to throw a couple of uh, clamp ferrites around there and maybe uh, either heat shrink uh, those on just to keep it tidy or something like that. That just might take the edge off anything uh, picked up by the shield. And of course, don't forget to measure that it is actually, uh, the inner conductor is actually shorted out over here. Just measure that there's a direct short on there. Now we can just get in there and cut, start cutting the shield. A little gap, not huge, but just be careful you don't go too far and cut that inner conductor. That could ruin your day. So there you go. I've got two little cuts around there like into that now. Oh, slightly off symmetry. <laughs> She'll be right. And uh, now we'll just uh, cut that uh, outer braid out of there. There you go. Look at that. Bobby Dazzler. Right, so let's test this sucker. I'm going to get the uh, tech box uh, probe here. As a reference, the Gigatron board that we did in the uh, previous video. There we go. There's our response there. And I've frozen that. Let's actually plug in our new do-it-yourself probe, see if we get the same response. Now, I'm going to use the exact same uh, tech box amplifier here. I'm going to plug it uh, straight in. And yep, it seems to be working as a H-field probe. Look at that, no worries. Let's put it over the crystal again, get the same amplitude as before, bingo, look at that, <laughs> Bobby Dazzler, let me get an average on that, check it out, that is insanely close, that's just nuts, get real time there, near identical, 
<laughs> you can't really ask for much difference. There's small discrepancies in the diameter of this thing and the, the positioning and stuff like that. Our $10 do-it-yourself probe. <laughs> Basically exactly the same performance as that. Take oh, I'm not going to claim it's exactly the same performance, but, you know, it's pretty close over this sort of bandwidth. And our address mode uh, decoder chip over here. Let's have a look. Let's get the tech box probe. I believe that's pretty close to the same height. Get tongue at the right angle. It's near on identical. You can see, like, the same peaks up here. Like, say, up at the high end here. You can see it's getting exactly the same peaks, everything else. The performance is, you know, it, it's, it's as near to identical as you can get, really. Okay, let's try it over a much wider frequency range now, up to uh, one gig and see what's what. We'll get the crystal once again. The yellow one's the tech box. And this one is our do-it-yourself jobby. More than good enough for any practical application of a uh, H-field probe. And you have to remember that these probes don't have a di really a direct correlation uh, to the far field uh, radiated emissions that you're going to get in the uh, test house. They're designed for like troubleshooting, finding uh, any potential spikes before you get and spend all the expense on a full uh, far field uh, compliance measurement. But hey, we're using the uh, tech box receiver. Let's try our $5 jobby from eBay and see what happens. This is a uh, 30 dB one, so it's got an extra 10 dB again, so that might be an issue, but it works a treat. Um, 6 volt uh, power source drawing uh, 22 milliamps. I believe this particular board can go from uh, 6 to 12 volt. Actually, this is interesting. It is significantly higher amplitude with the lower gain 20 dB one here. So... So that's a bit uh, surprising, although the gain of these things does change with uh, frequency. But yeah, I wouldn't have expected that much difference. That's pretty dramatic. What's going on there? I think you can buy this just on its own for like uh, 200 bucks or something. But basically, um, yeah, well, let's, let's do a teardown, shall we? Well, that looks pretty schmick, doesn't it? But, uh, you know, is it worth the money? Well, you tell me, because this one is a couple hundred bucks if you buy it on its own. This one... It's five bucks delivered from eBay. They use a different part, but the topology is absolutely the same. 50 ohms uh, controlled impedance line, AC coupled input and output, and then just feeding in uh, the supply. In this case, just uh, five volts being fed in, and that's uh, it via, via an inductor, of course, and uh, uh, Bob's your uncle. But yeah, they're basically the uh, same thing. It just comes down to which chip is used. SK171343, so I'm going to have to decode that jobby and give it a look. But there's no reason why you can't roll your own if you wanted exactly the same as this. But uh, yeah, there's not much in it. And this cheap-ass one here, well, I don't know what that jobby is. But either way you look at it, when you use the uh, exact same amplifier, the performance is <laughs> identical. Beauty. But we're not done yet because this probe is all exposed. We've got the big ground shield around here. And the last thing you want when you're probing around a board is to short out any pins. That could really ruin your day. So let's solve that problem. This commercial probe has like a uh, rubber baby buggy bumper uh, protected like vinyl rubbery coating over the uh, PCB here. So what we're going to do is uh, rubber coat um, this as well with... Plasti dip. Um, this is for like, you know, automotive, you, you know, plasticize your rims on your car or whatever. I don't know. And that should provide a nice uh, insulative layer. There it is. It insulates electrical shock, vibration, heats, deadened sound, all sorts of stuff. Hmm. Haven't used this before. I'll give it a burl. Just stick that on. And well, I only had time to give it uh, two coats and it's a little bit how you're doing, but uh, it is like <laughs> rubbery coated, like insulated. I think it needs probably another good uh, two coats at, at least. It didn't really like stick into that uh, plastic over there. So, but of course you could use uh, heat shrink or maybe a, a, like if you, there's some other uh, dip solution or something you can dip it in. I don't know how they actually do this coating on here. If anyone knows, uh, please let us know. All right. I know everyone's not going to be happy unless I actually show you what's inside this thing. So let's uh, uh, see if my guess is correct that it is actually actually just a um, symmetrical split shield with a single uh, controlled loop terminated on one side. 
just like we did here. And surprise, surprise, <laughs> not really. There it is. There's the split in your uh, shield like that, both top and bottom. And yeah, they put a few vias around there, not a huge amount, but just enough to uh, uh, stitch it together. And you can probably just see inside there. In fact, it's going to—it's closer to this side than it is that side because they're actually doing this on a full layer board. You can see the vias around there like that. And uh, yeah, it's just a single 50 ohm controlled impedance trace in there. But as I said, you know, this will be a controlled impedance uh, dielectric, no doubt. But that's that's all that's inside this is just a shorted loop. And it'll be shorted on one side. Hang on. And yep, there you go. You can see the extra vias over there. So it comes in and goes around the center of there, all the way around with LBJ and terminates on that other side there. Exactly like the one we just built, but we did it with coax instead of PCB. And I might do a follow-up video, um, actually, you know, laying out a board and actually doing one of these, getting a PCB manufactured, but the performance is <laughs> near on identical between these. Just less, the uh, rubber's left a bit of, uh, bit of residue on the board there. Woohoo, hold on to your hat, hang on. This uh, preamp does actually perform. I increased, I was operating at 6 volts before, it said 6 to 12 volt range, but of course it's going to be uh, uh, voltage dependent, and take it up to 12 volts, and look at the response. This was the uh, one before with the te yellow ones, the tech box, and it looks like we could be that 10 dB higher. The wave shape's exactly the same, so let me whack in a 10 dB attenuator in there, and I think we're going to be on the money. So I whacked a 10 dB attenuator on there, and look at that. We're on, like, it, uh, you have to get the exact right height. Hold your tongue at the right angle, but that's near on identical if I move it away. And move it in. There you go, that preamp works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So don't believe those eBay ads. <laughs> it said 6 to 12 volts. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So there you have it, three bucks for the coax, about six dollars for the board, like under ten dollars delivered, and I don't know, you gotta throw in some heat shrink or whatever, and I, as far as I can measure, it's basically the same performance as this three hundred dollar um, tech box set here. Of course, I uh, consider this a part one of this uh, video, because we need to like uh, measure the full performance, have to manufacture another one, get like the coupling uh, response and all, you know, that sort of jazz. And um, and I've got some other uh, amplifiers um, coming as well. I just ordered a couple of them. This one just happened to turn up first. You can buy ones with like uh, shielded enclosures and uh, stuff like that, but it, it works fine. Ten bucks. <laughs> Practically identical performance. So I hope you like that and it's encouraged you to go and build your own HField Pros because they are a really nice bit of kit. Even if you're not going to send something out for uh, pre-compliance, just to like sweep over your board. I'm going to have to do a separate video on the different usages of them and probably do another one making an eField Probe. They're even uh, simpler than the HField uh, Pros. But yeah, <laughs> for 10 bucks, that's absolutely fantastic. So if you found that useful, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below on in the YouTube comments or EV blog forum. Catch you next time.